In this video we're going to see how to install Eclipse onto a Windows machine. In this case I'm using a virtual machine, a virtual machine that's in Sandbox, but the same instructions will work if you are installing it onto bare metal, onto a laptop that's running Windows or a desktop that's running Windows. So let's start by just searching your favorite search engine for Eclipse Download, and then we will click on this Eclipse Downloads link here. And we want to get a specific a specific flavor of Eclipse, the Enterprise Edition, which allows us to build uh, our type of microservices applications that we want to build. So I'm going to go to Download Packages here, and then I'm going to go to the in Eclipse Installer, and I'm going to grab Windows 64-bit because, naturally, I'm on Windows. So we'll click this, and then we'll click Download, and we'll let this go for a few moments. We'll choose Save, and now we'll choose Run. A little icon appears, and this is one thing that's interesting, is that we require a 64-bit Java 1.80 virtual machine, and it can't find one because this is a brand new flavor of Windows. So I'm going to choose No. Now, uh, it brings me to a link here where I can download the Java 1.80 uh, JDK. This is handy because if you try to go out and search on the Java download site, it can be a little bit tricky on which one you actually want to get. So it comes up here and it gives us a nice suggestion. Now, if we scroll to the bottom, we notice there's several different options here and some require uh, some kind of configuration. I'm going to go ahead and choose Oracle JDK 8. Uh, note JDK versus JRE. JRE is the Java runtime environment, which is what you need to run Java programs. We want to run Java programs, but we also want to build Java programs, so we require the JDK. JDK, again, when you go out to this page, you might find that it's a little bit different depending on when you go to this page versus when I recorded this video. What I recommend is just do what they recommend. Here they're saying this is the best default choice. A few months from now, they might take another one of these JDKs and say it's the best default choice. I will say for the work that we're going to do, we don't need anything newer than JDK 8. We're not going to use any newer features, so this one will be just fine. So we'll click and we will scroll through Java Development Kit 8. Uh, we'll look for the one that is the most appropriate for us. Of course, we'll accept the license agreement after reading it in full. Uh, and then we're going to grab Windows X64. So click, and we'll let this download. Now, this forcing you to create an account is a new thing, and I'll confess I'm not too keen on it. But nonetheless, uh, I did pause the video and go ahead and create an account and verify the account. It requires that you verify your email address as well, so you have to actually put in some kind of legitimate email address. I also found the login process to be a bit of a pain in the rear because as soon as I tried to log in, it gave me a system error without any additional information. Now, I'm sure this isn't the official process, but nonetheless, I went back to the download page, I clicked on the download link, and then that time it let me download it without logging in. So, your experience may be a bit different than mine, and and uh, forgive me for having a, a bit of a frustration on that, because it, it wasn't very straightforward. But nonetheless, however you can manage to do it, go ahead and download the uh, JDK 8. Now, let's click on this, and let's get this to install brings up a little wizard where we can install our JDK 8, so we'll go ahead and choose Next. Now, here again, it's going to install by default to this very long-winded directory. That's typically fine, and if you want to put it there, that's fine as well. My recommendation, though, is to put it very close to C drive, because this is one that you might be accessing from the command line uh, relatively frequently. So, I'll go ahead and just chop it down and put it on the C drive. Um, and really, I, I'm going to go ahead and chop it down to just JDK 1.8.0, and we'll choose OK. So again, the Java Development Kit is what we use to uh, write our Java software. Public JRE, um, see if it gives us any options there as well. doesn't look like it's going to give us any options, so uh, no problem. We'll go ahead and choose Next. OK. Now for the JRE, similar thing here. It, it buries it under C, Program Files, Java, so on and so forth. For many people, that's fine. And if you want to put it there, again, that's fine as well. Uh, my preference, though, is to put it under something that's a little closer to the C drive. Uh, we don't want to put it directly in C, so let's do C, and then let's see if we can make a new folder under here. Uh, we'll just say Make New Folder, and we'll call it JRE 1.8.0. That's fine. And Enter, and OK, and let's go ahead and say Next.
and successfully installed. So let's close. Now let's go back to that Eclipse installer that we started earlier. We'll go double click on this and let's see if it can get a little bit further this time. So we'll select uh, Eclipse IDE for Enterprise Java Developers and it's able to find the JRE at this point. Notice we didn't get the error message we got before, so I feel a little bit better. For installation folder, um, gives us a fairly long path for the installation folder. And for Eclipse, I kind of like having it a little bit closer to the C drive. So let's just make it C Eclipse. Again, because this is something that we might start from the command line. Uh, so having it a little closer to C is a little bit easier. Uh, now let's go ahead and click Install. Let's read the entire license agreement, every word, every detail, make sure we understand it completely, and then choose Accept Now. And once again, we will read all of these different license agreements in great detail, uh, choose Remember, and choose Accept. Of course, a few more things we want to uh, read in complete detail, and then choose Accept, and Accept Selected, and Installation Completed Successfully. So let's choose Launch. It prompts us for a workspace, and this is essentially a directory system on our computer where all of our projects will live. You can have multiple workspaces, and a workspace can contain multiple projects, so sometimes it's a good idea to give them themes. Like, think about, I have a workspace for my school projects, a workspace for my work projects, and a workspace for anything experimental, maybe some side projects that I'm doing. Let's go ahead and use this as Eclipse Workspace and choose Launch. And so far it looks pretty good. We have a welcome screen. I will uh, go ahead and close this so we can get to our IDE. I've used Eclipse for a long time. It's something that I'm fairly familiar with. I will say the look and feel can be a bit intimidating at times. Uh, kind of uh, has a lot of buttons and a lot of things. And we won't explore every single button in this class and this playlist. Uh, but we sure will explore some of them. I'm going to go ahead and just choose create a new project. I just want to make sure that everything works as expected. So new Java project. Next, I'm going to make this really fast. We're going to make it a hello world. Uh, Java SE 1.8, that's good. Everything here looks good. I'll go ahead and choose finish. Okay, we'll open the Java perspective. A perspective in Eclipse is a way that it organizes its windows for one particular type of development. This one's the Java perspective. There's also the Enterprise Edition perspective. Uh, several other perspectives. Uh, you can go to Window and Perspective, and you can change the perspective here. Uh, it, it's, it's kind of showing you the most important things for that particular type of development. So let's go ahead and go to our Hello World, and I'm going to go to Source. I'm going to right click and we'll say new. And again, we're just going to do a quick and dirty here. We're going to say class uh, package. We'll say edu.uc.jonesbr. So a package is typically a domain name in reverse and uh, something that identifies us beyond that. So uc.edu would be the University of Cincinnati's domain. And then jonesbr is my unique username within that domain, has been my unique username now. Uh, since about 2000, the year 2000. So had that one for a little while. Name, we'll call this one Hello World again. Uh, Superclass Java Lang Object, that all looks... Ooh, I meant to click the public... I, I meant to add the public static void main method, which was a tick box on that previous screen. I forgot to tick it, but no problem. We can add it manually. Public static void main string args. In the world of Java, this is where a program starts. Open curly, close curly, so we've started our method. And then here I'll just say system.alt.println, and then the old-fashioned hello world. We just want to confirm that we have an IDE where we can write a program, we can compile, and we can run that program. So I choose Save, and then I right-click, and we will choose Run As, and we'll choose Java Application. And take a look down at the bottom. Sure enough, we get Hello World. So it was able to write the program, run the program, and if I want, I could even debug the program. Uh, probably one of the most important things that we want to learn as a good software developer is how to be a good debugger. I snap a breakpoint here. I right-click, and I choose Debug As. And then Debug, uh, oops, we'll go to Debug As Java Application. But go ahead and choose Allow Access here. Switch to the debugging perspective. Remember we said a perspective is kind of like 
uh, something that optimizes the Eclipse environment for the work that you're currently doing. Now you see we have a mint green line that stopped on Hello World. There's nothing in the console output yet. I can go to Run. I can go to Step Over, which is essentially going to execute that line. As soon as that line executes, we get the Hello World. Uh, and then I can tell it to just continue uh, because I'm all done. And so we'll go to Resume, which is F8. And there we go. One note, if you're used to another development environment, one note is that they tend to have different debug keys, so be careful. Uh, IntelliJ, NetBeans, Visual Studio, Eclipse, they all have different debug keys, and it's weird where the step over key in one is the resume key in another. So a lot of times the key that you're used to hitting is the key that you don't want to hit. So many times I'll just say the key that I'm using. Sometimes I'll go ahead and go up here and show it in the menu just so we know exactly what I'm doing. So at this point, we've reached our objective. We have installed Eclipse and the Java SDK and Java JRE on our Windows machine, in this case, a virtual machine. This is going to be a nice framework that will help us build a, a Spring Boot microservice application, which we'll do over the next series of videos. So I hope this video has been helpful, and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.